Okay, um, welcome back to my channel. Uh, sorry for my absence. It's obviously not my intention. Life is just busy, as you probably all know. Um, but thank you for coming back to my channel. Uh, I just want to say sorry also if I just am all over the place. I've been really trying to gather my thoughts, but it's just super hard. So I figure it's better to just turn on my camera and hit record. So that's just what's going to happen here. So in this video, I also want to talk about why I got surgery has my life improved and just like a general update of what life has been since getting surgery. So I originally had my surgery booked for May of 2017. I canceled it just out of fear of having surgery. Uh, I was scared of getting it because I've never had a surgery done other than anything dental, but for those ones I just had a sedative and it wasn't really being put under. And also I just had a fear of potentially not getting a diagnosis and just, not that I wanted to be diagnosed with endometriosis, but just having a reason for all my pain throughout all the years. And so I kept pushing it back a week or two here and just not committing to it and then eventually I was like okay I just need to get this done I had a really awful period and I was just like I'm sick of this so I need a reason for all this pain um, and I wanted to go away so I had it booked for July 6 2017 so I guess I should give a little backstory first as to why I even got the surgery so I started my period at the age of 12 I had debilitating pain ever since then so it's just interesting just to think about the potential causes of endometriosis because I had it for my first period, the pain. It was just awful pain. I can't even count how many times I've been to the emergency room for my pain. During my period, it's honestly debilitating. It's the kind where you, as you probably know if you have it, that you cancel plans last minute with friends and family all the time because it just happens unexpectedly, the pain bouts. Like right now, I'm having pain in my ovaries and I'm just finishing my period, but it's painful. Obviously, I'm, I have to go to work today, but it's not enough to kill me because I've gotten used to the pain. But it's just unexpected, right? And so my period was just bad all the time. Sometimes, like I could say maybe 10% of the time, it wouldn't be the worst thing ever. It would just be cramps and I could deal with it, but um, it would always be awful, heavy periods. Um, I have anemia because of it and obviously a supplement, but whatever. And then the pain throughout the year is gradually starting to increase. So I started getting it during ovulation so it would be kind of like a heaviness in my pelvis during ovulation time just the same type of pain like extreme lower back pain where i'm like oh my god i feel like my back is broken like that kind of pain and when i went to the washroom so when i would go pee it would feel like this oh, feeling like that on my pelvic area it was just so painful to pee where i couldn't push the pee i just let it come out as it would and that's just the kind of pain I had. And then it increased again more where I'd have it every single day. So cramps every single day and lower back pain every single day. And yeah, it just progressively keeps getting worse. So then that's why I decided to go for it. So when I woke up from my surgery and I had my discharge papers from the hospital, it had said that my two diagnoses were first stage one, sorry, stage two endometriosis and then infertility. So I don't really know the reason why I'm getting diagnosed with infertility. We weren't trying to conceive at that point, but it's probably because endometriosis causes infertility. And then I had kinked fallopian tubes because it was growing on the outside of my fallopian tubes. So then coming out of surgery, uh, I can't say that it improved my life right away because I had a hard recovery. I was off work for about eight weeks, thankfully. I couldn't really do anything on my own, like as in getting out of bed, sit down, um, like sitting down on the couch, sitting down on the toilet, sitting down on the bed bending over, couldn't do anything like that for at least a week on my own. I could barely do it outside of that week, but Eric had to go back to work. Eric's my boyfriend. He had to go back to work. So I couldn't do things like I, whoever was following me on Snapchat could see, I couldn't even like bend over the remote was on the ground. I couldn't even bend over to grab the TV remote. I had to use my foot and just try to inch it up my leg and just simple stuff like that I couldn't do. I couldn't shower. Anything that takes any sort of strength from your abdomen, I could not do because clearly they cut into it, right? And then after that eight weeks, I went back to work just part-time. Uh, 
again, thankfully, I'm so thankful that I had the option to do that. I went back to work and it was still hard because it takes a long time for your ab muscles to heal. My appetite was really low for the eight weeks following surgery and then after that I couldn't really eat too much, but that it's not that big of a deal. Um, and then my periods, uh, I had what people call like flooding. Uh, I didn't feel comfortable using a tampon or a diva cup. Just, it was anything up there was just like really excruciating. So I just used pads and it was just like a flood of blood on the pad. I normally have small and big clots, but after surgery I didn't. I think it's because the polyps were removed. And my periods were bad. Like I was in the hospital for a cyst leak because coming out of surgery I had a hemorrhagic cyst, which is a blood filled cyst. And I thought I had burst. I was in so much pain. I was like, I have a video about that, like how bad I was in pain. And I had thought I had burst, but when I went to the hospital, it had just leaked. And ever since surgery, I still have had reoccurring cysts. Um, I've had leaks, I've had bursts, I've gone to the emergency a couple of times, but that was only in like the recovery window. Ever since um, I ended like that eight week recovery, I haven't been to the hospital for my period, which is amazing. Um, as for daily pain, that, went away completely so if i could say was the surgery worth it yeah it was worth it because i didn't have any more daily pain um the thing that increased post-surgery though was ovulation pain it was freaking unbelievable how much pain i have been in every single ovulation that i've had it was worse post-surgery it's gotten a tiny little bit better but it was so awful where i could not sleep it was just a heaviness and it looks like i'm pregnant like it looks like I'm like six months pregnant when I'm ovulating because it is just that much swelling and my ovaries are, I guess, that impacted. It could be because of cysts, who knows? But it didn't like really improve any of that pain. Sorry, I kind of feel like I'm not making sense right now. So if I'm not, just whatever. I'm just trying to gather my thoughts properly here. It, so I want to, I guess what I should do here is like kind of go through my symptoms, what I had pre-surgery and see if they've gotten better post-surgery. So. Um, the first one is, it's called like dysmenorrhea, which is having really painful periods. That decreased a little bit, um, but now coming out over a year post-surgery, it has increased again, but they're not as bad. It's not every single period is bad. I take, you know, Tylenol and Advil as per normal, but every period is not bad, so it has increased. Um, it has increased my quality of life, I should say. Um, pain with a bowel movement that was gone for about a year post-surgery and then it's back it started again probably back in July um, where it's the kind of pain where when I go number two during my period I'm holding onto the bathtub it's debilitating it's awful um, and a new symptom is pain with urination I guess I said I had it pre-surgery but it's even worse post-surgery pain with urination during ovulation I'm Painful sex was another symptom that I had, and that depends, but yeah, it's still there. It's, it's come back. I, like they say, you can have sex at the six-week mark. I could not. It was so excruciating. I just had to stop. It was awful. Another one would be, oh, sorry, a new symptom now that I have, which is awful, is heartburn. It's like, even before my period starts now, I get extreme heartburn just terrible terrible heartburn where I have to take Zantac I started taking recently apple cider vinegar in the morning before I have my coffee and it helps so much it's amazing I, I probably barely even get heartburn now and um, another new symptom post-surgery would be um, I have my cramps start before my flow even starts so I get extreme debilitating cramps where I'm like, oh my gosh. Like normally I would expect after having like a six to eight hour nonstop pain bout, I would expect to just pass like a massive clot. Now that doesn't happen right away. I'm just in so much pain for three-ish days where it's like I am going to die, but I have to, if I'm working, I have to kind of fake it and kind of hide it because it's like I'm working. I can't do anything about it. So I'm like trying to help people. I work in retail sales. I have to help people and I'm just like, oh my God, I could fucking die right now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm referring, but that's just like how it is. And um, yeah, it's just that awful. So, and then my flow starts and then it's still bad cramps. So for the year following my period, it, I felt like, yes, this was so worth it. And then now I'm like, I don't even know because all my symptoms are, have come back and even more have come on now. So I don't even know what to think now. I know that like I had the laser surgery, which I guess is called ablation. I know that if you have excision, 
your chances of reoccurring symptoms are a lot lower than this type of surgery I had. But you have to find an endometriosis specialist, which I do not have. I have someone who's very knowledgeable in it and she does a lot of research in it, but she's not counted as a specialist because of the type of surgery she does. And she's also like an OBGYN and a fertility specialist, so you need just, I need to find somebody who is just strictly in endometriosis, which is kind of hard where I live right now in Edmonton. There isn't anybody really. There are some people who are highly sought after, but they also focus still on fertility and being a OBGYN, which you need to find somebody who doesn't just do that. So overall, like I am happy I had this surgery. Um, it just, my quality of life has slowly started to go down, but it is a heck of a lot better than it was pre-surgery. So for anybody who's kind of contemplating, should I get it, should I not get it? I would say just weigh your pros and cons. If you're having daily pain like I was, crazy periods, cysts burst, then yeah, go for it for sure. If it's something that's maybe only during your period and you can kind of handle it, maybe it's not so much worth it to go because they are kind of, when I was talking to the, one of the fertility specialists at the clinic we were going to, he was saying they're kind of like not doing surgery on as much women anymore for endometriosis because how often it reoccurs because it just keeps growing back, right? And there is no cure for, unfortunately. I hope it, like that little update has helped somebody see how bad endometriosis is, how there is no cure, it keeps coming back, it improves your quality of life for maybe a year if you're lucky, and then it, it comes back again. And you just have to keep getting surgeries until you get pregnant or decide to get a hysterectomy, which even a hysterectomy does not cure it whatsoever, so I don't know why I'm saying that, but I'm, as for like next steps, I don't have surgery in my mind right now. I will if my quality of life keeps going down, um, but it's not something that's ideal because you have to take a lot of time off work, at least for me. My body just, I guess, does not handle surgery well and because of all the things I had done. Um, I have had follow-up ultrasounds. I had a saline ultrasound where they pump saline into your uterus and kind of look if there's any polyps, which I never had pre-surgery, so if I had that, they would have saw my polyps, but um, when I had the surgery, he was, or the ultrasound, he was like, oh, yeah, I see a polyp, and he's like, oh, never mind, so kind of makes me nervous that he said, oh, never mind, like, what made him think that maybe there could be one, so I'm kind of fearful that maybe I do have polyps again, um, because that is a thing to not be able to conceive, um, but yeah, I do want to keep doing more videos, so I'm going to try to be more consistent, it's just, it sounds stupid about my days off, I don't want to put makeup on, and I really don't want to do a video without makeup on, not that I look so amazing with it on, but Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope that helps somebody kind of figure out something and maybe educate those on endometriosis and kind of be there for the people in your life who have it and just give them a break. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Um, until next time.